help support the entrepreneurs today that are building towards those futures. So my background is I um, am now a venture capitalist, but I actually started as an entrepreneur. So I started a company, I had an idea, and it took pitching a lot of people to get them to believe in what I was doing. And through that process, I was able to raise uh, $2 million in venture capital. I grew the business to um, a larger team. I ended up selling it to a company called Groupon uh, for a nice exit, and then was able to take some of that capital and start a second business. And now I'm working on my third business, which is a venture capital company here in New York. So we support technology entrepreneurs who are just getting started, they have big ideas, and we write them checks and give them support to help them grow. So um, today I'm here to talk a little bit about pitching your business. Now if you're participating in the hackathon or you're just looking for collaborators or you wanna hire a team, all of that has to do with pitching your business idea because you may have the best idea, but if no one understands it, then it's really hard to get people on board. So successful pitches matter, not only just in a presentation to a venture capitalist like myself, but also in standing in an elevator, having a conversation at a conference like this. How do people know where you are and what you stand for? If you immediately just say like, oh, I'm interested in uh, technology, what does that mean? Versus saying, I'm really good at programming and I'm looking for people who have big ideas that I can help them develop. That's a very quick pitch, but it helps people put in their mind, okay, maybe there's a way that we could work together, maybe I could make an introduction uh, to you or for you. So I think successful pitching is uh, important no matter where you are. So one of the key things about pitching though is making sure that you're tailoring to your audience. So if you're talking to a venture capitalist, it's good to talk about your business and what you're doing. If you're talking to a colleague, it's good to see how you can collaborate. If you're putting your business online or you're sending a tweet, maybe you're talking to customers. So all of those different pitches matter and they're always a little bit different. So making sure you know who your audience is, is great. Um, if you're standing here in person in a conference like this, maybe it's simply asking the other person what their interests are early on, so you know, am I pitching a customer, am I pitching a, a fellow uh, colleague, or am I pitching someone who can write me a check? So the tips to successful pitch, these are kind of the quick five things. If you do nothing else, uh, you know, just trying to change your pitch into this format may help a little bit in what you're gonna do. So starting big. Uh, what we find is a lot of entrepreneurs start talking about their exciting technology without giving a big picture of what they do. So maybe you've built an engine that makes jets go much faster. And so you're really excited about the technical change. Maybe you have a 10% better uh, engine than any of these other rocket companies that are out there. But that just makes it um, about the rocket. And if I don't know anything about rockets, then maybe I don't care. Well, what is 10%? Is that a big deal? Is it not? So thinking about what is the bigger vision of what your company does. If it says, I can get people to outer space 10 times faster, you've piqued my interest. I'm like, go on, tell me more. So I think it's hard sometimes when you know every single detail of your industry to think about like what is the macro view that people who have no idea what I'm doing care about. So anytime you're talking about um, your business, try and think of the biggest idea possible that it applies to. A common example people use is like Uber. Uber, at its simplest, is pushing a button and a taxi arriving. Now, when they pitch that to other people, they say, we are changing transportation. We think of transportation, that means airplanes, that means metros, that means ships, that means a lot of things. Their app only is really pushing a button for a car to arrive, but they pitch you at the high level. So kind of go as big as you possibly can with the big idea. And then from there, you can spark some interest. So you've told them about the big idea. Well, maybe they don't know how big your industry is. Um, we've invested in a company that uh, is in the jewelry category. Now, everyone can think, okay, I know what jewelry is. 
People wear it, people spend money on it. There's cheap jewelry, there's expensive jewelry. But knowing that it's a $300 billion industry makes it really interesting. So it's not just, oh, it's a nice to have, it's actually a lot of money is flowing through it. So if you have any numbers that relay how important what your big idea is, that helps people kind of perk up and say, maybe, maybe this is interesting, maybe this is a good thing. Um, so whatever project you're working on, if you're working at the hackathon tomorrow, what are the things that are most compelling um, at a high level and make people ask, tell me more about that. So don't give them the whole story, just enough of a little tidbit should help uh, get them there. Then the next big part of any pitch is why you? What do you bring to the table? Is it you have experience uh, building in engineering? Is it you've always had a hobby for Legos and you love building and you want to create the next best Lego product? Is it that you absolutely hate hailing a taxi cab on the corner of the street and you dream night and day about how you're going to destroy that possibly behavior? Those types of things matter. Um, being a venture capitalist, we talk to thousands of entrepreneurs who all are building businesses and what differentiates an entrepreneur more than the other is an obsession with the problem. Like, not just like, I built an app because it's cool. It's like, I built an app because it was so annoying to me and all my friends were sick and tired of me complaining about this problem and I was waiting for someone to fix it and then ultimately I was the one to fix it. So uh, I had that experience myself in travel. My first company was in travel. Um, every single person I met would always ask me for travel advice. I went to all seven continents. Uh, I went to 50 countries before I was 30. And so I was like, I want this to be easier. And I know so much about this space. Like, why don't I build something to do this? And that's what helped garner attention versus other people who like travel kind of in a passive way, but they weren't spending all of their money <laughs> you know, and free time doing it. So the other part about a pitch is speaking in numbers. So um, a lot of times people jump into the product. Oh, my product is so great. It has a purple button instead of a blue button. Um, people like it. If you say, I have 100 people using my product, that means that there's actual validation outside of just your idea. So any numbers that you can speak to that you've done, even if it feels small. So you know, Facebook has billions of users. But uh, so like the likelihood you're going to have that in a hackathon weekend is very small. But maybe you have three customers. Maybe you say, I built this hackathon app. And we, talked, we called three people, and they all said that they would buy it. Like, that's really good validation. So no matter how big or small the numbers are, if you use numbers, you're going to get a little bit more credibility in whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, and then the last piece of pitching, which is the most forgotten piece of pitching, is asking about interest. Being very honest, so saying, hi, here's my business, are you interested and would you ever write a check? That's what I do. And usually if an entrepreneur asks me, I'll be very honest of either, no, it's not a fit for me, or I am interested, maybe I would write a check, let's continue the conversation. This could be the same for asking if people wanna work on something with you or collaborating. Here's my idea, I'm gonna change transportation, it's a multi-billion dollar industry, uh, we make it really easy. We have hundreds of thousands of people using it. Are you interested in joining my team? Or are you interested in trying my products? Um, anyone who builds any sort of app, it's amazing how many at the end don't say, will you download my product? You could have one new customer every conversation you have. So being very upfront about what exactly it is you need and asking for it. Um, this is the same for raising money. It's uh, a lot of entrepreneurs come and meet with us, and at the end, they're just like, all right, that's my pitch. I'll see you later. And they never close the deal. They never say, hey, would you invest in us? And the ones that do either immediately know yes, and I need to spend more time with these people, or they say, no, time to move on. Go find someone else who you can go talk to. So don't be afraid to ask for exactly what you want. So just that quick recap of start big. You want to fly to the moon, great. 
spark interest. Wow, did you know that we can do a 10% faster engine to get there? Explain why you. Oh, I've built, been building rockets in my free time for 10 years, or two years. Speak numbers. We already have 10, com 10 engineers at NASA who are interested in learning more. <coughs> Ask about interest in close. Uh, are you interested in coming to work with us? Are you interested in trying it? Are you interested in learning more about funding the future of rockets? Uh, come talk to us. So those are the pieces that are most important. Now, I know that was a lot of information in a short period of time, so I wanted to give some follow-up uh, information that you could go check out and read a little bit more. Um, the Innovator's Dilemma is a great book for those of you who uh, want to read or the clip note version sometime this weekend. Um, Lean Startup uh, also does a good job of how to think about pitching your business. Um, Seth Godin, if you haven't read him, he writes 300-word uh, essays almost every day, and he does a great job of conveying an entire huge idea in a very simple format. And I've actually like worked with some people to reverse engineer his way of doing it. He always starts with a big idea. He always gives proof points, and then he always ends with uh, what the ask is or what he wants you to change your behavior. So pitching isn't just about your product. It can also be about a message that you want to sell. So, and then um, Fred Wilson uh, is a great venture capitalist. I actually worked with him before, um, and we invested in companies like Twitter, Kickstarter, Etsy, uh, Zynga, Lending Club. W these have fundamentally changed the way people do business, but when we first saw them, they were just very small ideas. Twitter was just writing a few sentences and sending it to your friends and now it has a global impact on a lot of people. So it's thinking about something very small and then making it very big by helping support those entrepreneurs grow over time. Uh, Mark Suster is also has a great blog talking about some of these ideas. So uh, if you have questions or ideas, this is my email address. So if you have a question, please ask. Feel free to pitch um, or pitch us on Twitter as well. Uh, but Take every opportunity to find ways to grow your business, share your idea, and make it concise. The goal is to get people interested in what you're doing, not just sell them all in one 30-second elevator pitch of, this is why we're so great, you need to invest right now, please take our money and, and do cool stuff. It's just like, huh, that's interesting. Do you want to have a follow-up meeting? That's the best way to pitch your business at a high level and continue to change the world with it. Thank you.